All right, here we go. Another episode with Ryan. I'm super excited. Super excited. Super excited today. <laughs> it's been quite the full moon, which is why we decided to do a podcast together. So Ray Ray, Ray, Ray was living that sea hunter life this week. So this is Melinda Van Fleet from the Good Karma Success Coach podcast. And yeah, but I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet of Good Karma Sport Fishing. Yes. So we have fun when we do podcast episodes together and we have received some nice feedback from other people that um, Ryan's drinking his Diet Coke. So he gets a little caffeine buzz and we get some feedback from people when they like to hear um, us together and stories we tell and tips we share. And we definitely keep it real because life is um, definitely full of challenges And different things happen to us as well as I'm sure they happen to you guys. And these past few days have been a little rough, even probably more than a past few days, would you say? Yes, I would say it's actually been really shitty. More than rough. (laughs) More than rough, yes. So we have definitely had lots of conversations of how we are pushing through things, how we are working on mindsets, how we're trying to take deep breaths and let things go and let things not bother us or I guess sometimes blame it on the full moon because it has definitely been interesting. And one of the things that we always talk about is keeping with our brand, keeping with our good karma brand and really trying to set boundaries and um, expectations have honest conversations, transparent conversations with people about their expectations and how we can best work with them. For me on my side, predominantly with sales, not necessarily with coaching or speaking, but with my sales business. And then obviously Ryan with his charter business. And sometimes it can get a little challenging. Yes. Can definitely be challenging, especially this time of year. And it's actually been challenging since Hurricane Dorian. So... Hasn't been quite the, it's been, it's been a pretty rough winter, I guess you can say. So it, I don't even know where to even begin, but I'm sitting here today when I, you know, in the back of my brain, I'm like, well, should I went fishing? Should I have taken my charter? And then I look outside and it's blowing 20 and I'm like, I've made the right decision. So I just don't take people to take them out there and beat them up. So it's just the, how I run my business. I've learned over the course of the years that not even the back country is that great. So you, it's just one of those things. So. so with that, we often have to just take a step back and regroup. Would you say that that's true? Yes. Yep. And that's something that definitely is – Where our heads are at right now is just taking a step back and regrouping. And I'm taking a step back and regrouping on how I spend my time because a lot of clients have these very high expectations. A lot of, I would say, dumping is going on. Yeah, there's a lot of dumping. 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 And I think that this is something that when you talk to other people, it's definitely prevalent out there. A lot of people are dumping on others, are being lazy, and you really have to work on setting your own boundaries and realizing what's good for you and not good for you. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of that. And I'm, I, it's taken a while for me to formulate my brand and what I'm all about, and I'm sticking with it. So, and that's just how I'm going to roll. Mm-hmm. And stopping to recognize it is probably step one, I would say. Would you say that as well? Yeah. I (laughs) definitely would say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going, oh, I can't believe that conversation just happened. I can't believe that that person just said that to me. And really stopping to recognize. A word I learned a long time ago, and Ryan did as well, is triggers. If you can stop to recognize what some triggers are for you, in your life, in your business, in your relationships, your relationships at home, wherever it may be, that is step one, is to recognize the triggers. Definitely. And there's been a few triggers the past 
couple days. <laughs> yeah. I would say more than a few. It seems they come around with the full moon. <laughs> yeah. And it and it's hard to say. We were talking this morning about someone that had um, done something yesterday. Sent Ryan a text yesterday that was a trigger, and then he had the opportunity to speak to that person today. And I gave Ryan such great props for having the courage to say something about it, ask what the meaning of that text was, and really just try to understand because when someone triggers you, you repeat that over and over and over in your head. And that's so much energy that you could be spending doing something else, thinking of something else, thinking of growing your business or thinking of dreaming big, you know, whatever. There's so many other things you'd be thinking about. The list is endless. And, you know, that person really didn't even mean to send it in a negative way, would you say? No, no, I don't think he was even thinking. No, he wasn't even thinking. He wasn't even thinking. He wasn't even thinking. So that's what's so crazy sometimes about some of these things that happen to you. You know, definitely stop to recognize them, recognize it's a trigger. And if you can, you know, have the courage to just politely say, hey, you know, what was up with that text you sent me and have a discussion about it. And often you'll find out that it wasn't meant to be harmful. It wasn't meant to be anything. They were just essentially this random text and it was a trigger for you and sent you kind of down a little bit of a path. Some of the other things that we um, do and we talk about is silence, right? Yep, silence. Silence is golden. I think that's from the movies, right? The movie theater. When you go to the movie, they'd like make you turn off your phone or not talk and they would say silence is golden. Yeah. I think people just need to learn that they need to. That was, that's one of the things I've had to learn over the course of the years. I, I needed to think twice before I speak to someone. And, and then th- that's the biggest thing. And sometimes you're better off not saying anything at all. So I've had a few of those here since December. Well, the old man one was the best one. Which one was that? <laughs> the one you got, I'm get, that I got to be a that I'm getting to be a grumpy old man. Oh yes, you're so, still but, yes. But that was kind of a that was a trigger. Yeah, that was a trigger because we are getting older. Yeah, I'm getting older. This is my birthday. Oh, and it was his birthday. Yep, yeah. yep. And he loves his birthday. But I, do you still love your birthday now that you're getting older? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Things have changed. Things have changed. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> And the other thing is meditation. How often do you meditate, Ryan Van Fleet? Uh, I don't know. Not as much as I'd like to. So it just, I, it's, it just depends. And I try to do it as much as I can because it does help. And I take like, you know, I take like 20 minutes and it would regroup my brain and, but I haven't been doing it a lot lately because I feel like I've had to get all this stuff done. And I f- yesterday I felt it. Yesterday I felt it. So I need to get back and doing it more often and because it does help. And when I'm running fishing charters in a row, I do it. I do it on a regular basis. I'm, sometimes I'll do it before I even leave the house when I know that things are going to be a little bit, bit of, a bit of a challenge with the weather and it helps. So, and out of the boat, I've learned to take deep breaths before I say anything. Because I just seen this video of this guy on a fishing charter, a captain, and the guy was having, the client was having a hard time grabbing the fish. And the captain kind of lost it on the poor guy. I could see in his face, he's like, oh, come on, grab the fish. I could see, I could feel that energy through that guy, that captain yelling at that guy. And. Was this on YouTube? It was on uh, Facebook, somewhere down in Key West. And the comments that I read were like, oh, that Guggen, he can't hold a fish. And I was like, you know, that's one thing I've got away from is I see these guys on the Facebook and they call on people names and calling them goons. And I'm like, guys, listen, man, these guys come down there. They don't know how to hold a fish. It's bumpy and they don't want to get their hands cut. And I don't blame them because it sucks. So I think people need to, like, take a breath before they throw a comment out there about that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the, yeah, he was – the captain got on his ass about not being able to hold the fish. But, yeah, sometimes you can have – a sometimes enough is enough. But 
that would have been a common case where I would have had to take a deep breath and step back and laugh a little bit mm-hmm. because it was funny. And the guy was like scared of catch touching the fish. That happens a lot. That happens probably more than anyone that happen- probably even recognizes. That, that happens so much. Everyone starts from somewhere. Everybody starts no from one somewhere. Not catching fish. Don't be calling people goons because they can't, they're scared of a fish. I don't blame them. Man, you know, I remember when I was a mate on a boat and the guys hated me. So you know how they haze me? They had me grab a mangrove snapper. And it, this mangrove snapper bit down on my thumb and wouldn't let go. Okay, it's dark, you can't see, and they got a good laugh out of it. But I lost feeling in that thumb because of the, that asshole. So, but that kind of stuff is serious. So, listen, I seen this, it, it was a trigger. It was like one of those things, like, why in the hell is that guy, he's getting paid good money, making fun of that kid that doesn't want to touch that fish? So, yeah, it was a yellowtail snapper, but come on, you know, there those things can be just as lethal on a on a on a nasty day too. So, but anyways, that's the type of stuff. So just be when you're up in the morning before you have your coffee. If you have a bad day, watch out before you fire something. A comment out there about calling somebody a goon. So, and to be honest, most of those people would probably make the same mistake anyways they're just keyboard warriors so yeah it is just what it is so the other thing that i would recommend is when your mind has um some challenges dealing with things that are negative or things that have triggered you is really work towards keeping super busy with all the other positive things in your life whether it's your kids or your job or something you're building, let's say you're working out, you're working on losing weight, you're reading, you're listening to positive things like podcasts or books on Audible. If your brain is busy with all these other positive things that you're working on and working towards, you'll have a much easier time pushing through some of the negatives. So I'm not going to say it's going to go away right away, but you will have an easier time working through some of those negative situations that happen because you know what we all have them and that's one reason why again why we really wanted to do this podcast is we really want to keep it real and you know often people look let's say at Ryan's job and what he does and they think it's so easy and he just gets out there and he fishes all day and it's really not oh, there's the latest, so many the latest one is oh he 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 fishes out of the keys where it's so easy yeah. I was like okay brother come on down jump on my boat and go get him if I if had nickel for every time I heard living the dream, like, you know, we just do nothing all day. Like I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so rich. <laughs> so I, and, and we like to share our reasons for doing our podcasts. Um, my two podcasts, Crushing Sales and Good Karma Success Coach, and then Ryan's Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast is to share and add value and help other people. That is truly our genuine reason of doing these podcasts. So I think that there's so much out there, a lot of jargon, a lot of, you know, people painting sunshiny roses pages all the time. And we are extremely positive people, but you know what? Sometimes we're just kind of like dealing with some shit. And, and ours right now has been weather for Ryan and for both of us challenges with people. And I think that the more aware you are, that it's not you, And that sometimes some of these people are just challenging. And if you have some tools to try to get through those days, then hopefully that can make a difference in your life. I mean, we definitely are seeing it. We're seeing it with different age generations um, for sure. And Ryan watches TikTok. And and (laughs) I've been picking on the TikTok a lot. He sent me a TikTok thing today on my text. it It takes me like two minutes and I watched some yeah, TikTok because it's, it's like so funny and it just makes me like not have to think about any other shit. Right. So I guess it's like me watching Vanderpump Rules, yes. right? Is that what you're going to say? But I don't show. sit and watch in Vanderpump Rules that much. But if I were to sit and watch Vanderpump Rules, is that what you're saying? <laughs> that, that crazy guy out there, that blonde haired guy, he's so funny. Well, you, the DJ. You're on yeah, the, 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 he's D- on the DJ. Yeah, man. Everybody's busting on that DJ because he's sleeping with all the ladies. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> and our final tip for this podcast is if you can – If your boundaries don't work, if you 
still have a hard time pushing through, you've, you know, stood up for yourself and asking questions and setting the boundaries is, you know, if you can walk away, walk away. So when we were talking about silence is golden, sometimes you need to be silent for a little bit and get your thoughts together. Sometimes you need to be silent for days or weeks. And then sometimes you just need to walk away. And I read a quote, I'll have to find it and put it in the show notes that talked about walking away from clients, bad clients. And the more bad clients you walk away from, you're setting the tone to the universe to bring you good clients. I don't want these bad clients. I only want good clients. And you know what? Believe it or not, over time, it really does happen and make a difference. When I look at the nature of Ryan's business and how his clients have changed over the years by him setting boundaries and really putting it out there, the type of clients he wants, he definitely has seen an increase in the quality of clients. Yeah. And I have too in yeah. my sales business, for sure. Yeah. I totally have. Totally. And one thing about the weather is that when you're fishing in a 23, okay, it is extremely tough to get from one point to another, okay? And over the years, I had fished in a lot of rough stuff. The level of intensity triples for a captain that really cares, okay? My level of intensity triples. And therefore, I'm not able to give my clients the 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 service that I need to give them because I'm more worried about the weather and the boat than I am about the client. Weather meaning that I've got to catch some fish for the client and it is tough on a 23 to catch fish, nice fish that they paid for. And I'm not talking about barracudas or little mackerels or or jacks on the bridges. You know, I'm talking about getting from point A to point B to catch nice mutton snappers, nice yellowtail snappers. And once you're on anchor in five to six foot seas in a 23, you got to get that hook back. So I've been in some spots where it wasn't so pretty. So I've read, I've, I, so my boundaries this year is that it's got to be decent and safe. And I have to be able to give my client a thousand percent before I'll take the charter. So, and that's my boundaries. So if I can't do it, I'm going to be honest with them that I can't. So, and they'll say, I still want to take it, take you. But I had a, I had a group last year. They were like, okay, well, they said definitely, definitely. And then at the end of the trip, they were unhappy. And they looked at me and they said, why didn't you pull any magic out? Oh, you didn't tell me this. Yeah. Why didn't you pull any magic out? Usually a good captain can pull magic out. Isn't it nice the things that people say to you? And I was like, don't ever call me again. Don't ever call me again. And good luck finding another guy with a 23 that can give you what I can give you. And, well, in general, too. In general. You shouldn't speak to anyone like that or any captain like that because all captains are extremely hardworking. Yep. So hopefully if they went to another charter, the other captain stood up for themselves as well. Yep, so. exactly. And the other captain would need to stand up for himself because guys like that just didn't need to be run off. Right. So anyhow, so those are our thoughts. We hope this helps somebody out there. We hope this helps yeah. that you're not alone that we all deal with these things. And if you work on recognizing things, stopping, taking a moment, practicing silence, standing up for yourself, boundaries, and you know what? If you have to walk away, walk away. Then our podcast has served its purpose for today. Yes, exactly. Right, Ryan? Yep. Awesome. So until then. Keep fishing. You're going to get your weather. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and and remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. Thanks for listening.